Hello, one and all. This is my view of Minecraft Academia, Chapter 370, History. And right off the bat, I want to ask a question. I'm being serious here. Do you guys think this chapter was really well written or really, really poorly written? Because honestly, I'm not quite sure. I mean, I first saw the Raws a few days ago. I thought to myself, are you freaking kidding me? Are you seriously kidding me? Discrimination based off appearance has brought up maybe like three or four times in this entire series in the last 370 chapters, and yet is apparently such a huge societal issue that 15,000 people are willing to march to the street and kill or die over it. They're seriously on their way to burn down a freaking hospital simply because they were told that, you know, doing so will somehow end discrimination. Somehow. Not great logic, but they are, you know, clearly very passionate about this issue and have clearly faced a lot of discrimination based off of their appearance. And yet we have seen none of it before the, you know, villain academia arc. Discrimination based off of Quirk wasn't even, you know, a plot. It never been brought up at all. So yeah, for the, all these people to be so, so angry over it, it just feels like, you know, if Horikoshi wanted this to be a major plot point, he should have done more to foreshadow it in the past. I'm not even saying, you know, some huge major arcs about it. When you're like, oh, uh, this, these heroes are going after mutant type quirk users and framing them for crimes. Or, oh, these heroes aren't saving mutant type quirk users. Or this business isn't serving mutant type quirk users. Nothing even that massive. Just, you know, some small hints sprinkled throughout the earlier chapters would have made this scene so much better and so much more impactful. Because, like, yeah, we saw it. It's been hinted at over and over again. But this just feels like it came out of the blue entirely. Even when Spinner said, oh, I was bullied because of how I looked, it felt more like, you know, oh, that was just a couple of jerks bullying him because, you know, they were jerks, not some sort of huge major societal issue that affects thousands of people every day. But then as I was rereading this chapter, I thought to myself, you know, a big thing throughout this entire series has been, you know, in the first chapter, in the first episode, we were introduced to Hero Society, a gleaming utopia where the heroes are righteous and virtuous and always win, and the villains are scum and garbage and awful. And just slowly and surely, that, you know, illusion has been weathered away. We've learned that, you know, some heroes are cowards, some he heroes are evil, some heroes are just completely awful people, and sometimes the heroes lose. The villains win, and people are left behind to suffer. And, you know, the villains, they aren't all scum. Some of them are actually good people who are just forced into villainry for reasons outside of their control. There are villains who are, in fact, actually really good people. So maybe this is, you know, part of that as well. You know, the last bit of uh, illusion has fallen off and we realize in hero society, it turns out discrimination is a really, really big issue. And Deku just wasn't aware of that. I mean, we've been seeing this whole world through Deku's point of view. And now, you know, Deku's come to realize, okay, yeah, hero society... It's kind of garbage, isn't it? <laughs> we need to make some changes. We need to make some serious, serious societal changes right here, right now. And honestly, it would make a lot of sense if Deku wasn't actually aware of discrimination going on because here society is really freaking good about erasing their own dark past, their own dark history. They made the world forget about all for one and this dude literally wipes cities off the map. Oh, that is terrifying. So it would be a very, very easy job to erase the discrimination from history and to make sure that people didn't, you know, publicly talk about discrimination going on out in the boonies far, far away from the civilized and educated people. And if that was actually Horkosh's intention, us not knowing about discrimination because Deku doesn't know about discrimination because he's been shielded from the dark truth of it, that is some incredibly amazing writing. Though the genius of that writing is lessened a bit by the fact that Horikoshi decided to name the two horrific purges in the past after Star Wars references, which, you know, bad. Very, very bad, Horikoshi. I mean, I found them funny, but wrong time, wrong place. Seriously. But anyway, though, speaking of genius writing, I absolutely love the first page because there's so much here to make us think, okay, this is Spinner. This is the world that Spinner grew up in. You know, he wasn't from some small rural village where people bullied him because of his appearance. They called him a monster. They told him to get out. They told him he had dirty blood. And, you know, they said no matter how much society changes, we will never accept you or your kind. I mean, it looked like Spinner. There was even a lizard. Like, okay, this is definitely Spinner. But it wasn't. It was, in fact, Shoji who faced the horrific discrimination and prejudice and all that. And now his face, you know, has the scars because of it. Meanwhile, Spinner, I don't think Spinner actually grew up in, like, a rural environment. Because, you know, 
his room, we saw his room a long, long time ago. You know, the room he said he locked himself in because he was afraid to go outside. And it looked fairly urban, not the kind of room you'd see out in the boonies. So, yeah, I don't think Spinner has actually really faced the same, you know, levels of discrimination that all the protesters here have faced in the past. I mean, for one thing, he's completely and utterly oblivious to everything they're saying. I mean, they're doing all these speeches about how, oh, it'll be him who leads us to the prominence in society. And Spinner is just, you know, completely and utterly brain dead by this point. Yeah, all for one giving him all those extra quirks kind of, you know, rotted his brain. And now he's a drooling idiot. I mean, seriously, even in the banner they're holding up to say, Spinner speaks for us. He looks completely and utterly just bored and unmotivated. And now he's, you know, quite literally incapable of speaking for them. So yeah, I don't think Spinner's actually faced the same level of discrimination as someone like Shoji has in the past. And that is very interesting. I mean, Shoji, the one who's actually been, you know, bullied and beaten and bruised and, I don't know, maybe set on fire because of his appearance, is the one that's, you know, trying to stop the group of people who've been discriminated against from, you know, actually, you know, going through with their attack. And that does, you know, make a lot of sense because they're attacking a hospital. That is stupid. That is so overwhelmingly stupid. And they know that, you know, Korgiri is locked in the basement. But do these people actually know that? What exactly do they think is going on with this hospital? And why are they leading a charge against it? So I'm very curious about their own perspective here, honestly. But please, let me know what you think down below. Where exactly did Spinner grow up? Was it more of a, you know, Boonies area or was it more in the city where discrimination is much less prevalent and has really faced any, you know, serious levels of discrimination or was just, you know, some mild bullying they wasn't able to handle? Uh, what exactly happened to Shoji? Because, you know, we finally got a chance to see his face and is, you know, about what I was expecting. But those scars are very interesting. Actually, I think we saw... I think we saw his face based off of concept art, you know, Horkosh released a very, very long time ago, but I don't remember seeing those scars. So is the whole discrimination being, you know, uh, attacked because of how he looked, something new, or something Horkosh always had planned? I'm not really sure about that. And, you know, just what happened to him, and how exactly did he end up here at UA? What has been his story? What has been his journey? I think we're actually going to get a chance to see that in the next chapter, because... Because, you know, we are kind of in the middle of Deku facing off against All for One. And now this third tier character is kind of taking the spotlight in a very interesting way. But just feels like this should have happened, you know, much, much sooner than it is. Very, very curious. But please, let me know anything down below. And until next time, peace!